Now I want to prove a lemma about short exact sequences. Okay, so let's uh, let this be a short exact sequence, a by alpha to b via beta to c. Okay, so let's recall what that means. It means that uh, you know, this map alpha is the injective and uh, the map beta is surjective and the image of alpha is the same as the kernel of beta. <clears throat> I want to say that alpha uh, gives an uh, isomorphism uh, from A to the image of alpha, uh, which you could also write as alpha A, uh, which is a subgroup of B. Um, <coughs> and uh, beta it induces an isomorphism, which we'll call beta bar, and that's from this quotient group, B mod alpha A to C. <clears throat> and the key uh, consequence of that, you know, we find that uh, B is going to be finite, uh, if and only if both A and C are finite. And if so, then the order of B is just equal to the order of A times the order of C. <clears throat> okay, so let's look at the proof of this. Um, <clears throat> Uh, so we can consider alpha as a morphism um, from A to alpha A. Uh, yeah. And it's got to be injective. That's by the definition of a, a short exact sequence. And one of the conditions for a short exact sequence is that alpha has to be injective and it has to be surjective by the definition of alpha A. I mean, uh, if we regarded alpha as, as a map from A to B, then it might not be surjective. But uh, if we regard it as a map to alpha A, then you know, by definition, everything in alpha A is hit by something in A. So in that context, alpha counts as a surjective map. Yeah, uh, so so uh, so it gives an isomorphism. Uh, a to alpha A. So that was our first claim. That's uh, fairly straightforward. Uh, <coughs> um, uh, okay, so we now want to uh, define beta bar. Uh, from B mod alpha A to C by uh, beta bar applied to a coset uh, B plus alpha A. Um, we want to just define that to be beta B. <coughs> um, so the problem with this kind of definition, as usual, is that it, uh, it's not obviously well defined. Okay, so we need to uh, check that this, uh, this is a well-defined definition. Um, <clears throat> uh, um, so the usual, um, usual issue, right? Suppose we've got the same coset represented in two different ways as B plus alpha A or as B prime plus alpha A. Um, yeah. <clears throat> And what does that mean? So that means that uh, B prime must be equal to B plus uh, alpha A uh, for some element A and A. Okay, and so because if they're in the same coset, the difference between them has to lie in the subgroup we're talking about, the subgroup alpha A. And so B prime minus B has to be equal to alpha A for some A. Um, <clears throat> 
Um, so that means that uh, b to b prime is b to b plus beta alpha a, which is the same as b to b, um, because beta alpha equals zero by exactness. Okay, um, yeah, the usual point, you know, the point is that uh, <coughs> you know, if you've got a short exact sequence, then the image of alpha is equal to kernel of beta. So in particular, if anything's in the image of alpha, then it's uh, sent by beta to zero. So the composite beta alpha is equal to zero. Okay. Um, uh, So that's enough to show that uh, the composite, uh, uh, this map beta bar is well defined. Okay, so we have our beta bar is well defined, um, but we need to prove that it's actually an isomorphism. Okay, so um, so uh, we've defined a beta bar from B mod alpha A uh, to C. Uh, essentially this definition Um, so yeah, we've got this uh, um, got this uh, homomorphism beta bar. Um, so we want to claim, firstly, that beta bar is surjective. Um, so for this, we can consider some C and C. Uh, okay. Um, so remember that uh, by definition of a short exact sequence, the map beta has to be surjective. Um, so that means that we can choose some B and B uh, with beta of B being equal to C. Um, so that means that if we look at uh, beta bar of the coset uh, b plus alpha a, well, that's also going to be equal to beta b, which is equal to c. Um, uh, so c is in the image of beta bar. And c was arbitrary, so uh, beta bar is, is surjective. <clears throat> so now we need to also prove that beta bar is injective. Um, Um, well, uh, let's suppose that beta bar sends some coset uh, um, uh, some coset u to zero. Um, so we're going to choose some b uh, So this uh, coset U can be expressed as in the form B plus alpha A for some B. Um, and then, uh, um, then if we apply uh, beta to that B, well, that's the same as applying beta bar to the corresponding coset U. Uh, and that was U, that was zero by assumption. And so this means that uh, B is in the image, is a kernel of, uh, of beta. But the kernel of beta is the same as the image of alpha. Um, so that's the definition of a short exact sequence again, right? That the uh, kernel of beta is the same as the image of alpha. 
Uh, that's 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 just what we mean by an exact sequence, and then we had extra conditions to be a short exact sequence. Okay, uh, <clears throat> uh, so uh, uh, so that means that B is alpha A uh, for some A and A. Um, uh, So the coset, coset U, okay, we can now write as, this is just the zero coset. So, <clears throat> um, okay, so we've shown that the kernel of beta bar is trivial. Um, so that means that beta bar is injective. But we've already seen that it's a it's surjective as well. So, uh, um, so it's actually an isomorphism. Um, from B mod alpha A to C. So that was most of what we wanted to prove. We also wanted to prove this issue about finiteness and orders. Um, so we'll do that in just a second. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> okay, so suppose B. Uh, <clears throat> Okay, so that means that alpha A is a subgroup uh, so that's a subgroup of finite groups so it's certainly finite and also B mod alpha A uh, that's a quotient Any, obviously, any quotient of a finite group is also finite. Okay, so, um, <clears throat> but we've seen that A is isomorphic to alpha A, and C is isomorphic to B mod alpha A. Uh, and so A and C are therefore also finite. Um, <clears throat> Converse is essentially the same. So if we know that the uh, if we know that a and c are finite, then alpha a and uh, b mod alpha a are finite, and uh, it follows easily that b is a finite. Um, I mean, it's kind of standard. Um, it's basically look uh, essentially the same as Lagrange's theorem uh, that. Uh, the size of B is equal to the size of alpha A times the size of B mod alpha A. Um, uh, and that's uh, and because we've got a, an isomorphism from A to alpha A, the size of alpha A is the same as size of A. And we've also got an isomorphism from B mod alpha A to C, so that's uh, this number here is the size of C. And uh, that's the end of the proof.